Greetings. I would like to do a quick demonstration and explanation of the Open Sound Control Protocol. The Open Sound Control Protocol is a networking protocol designed for sending musical data over networks. Um, it is in, in some ways the successor to MIDI, in that wh whereas with MIDI you can only send 7-bit byte messages, um, which is very limiting, you can send anything you want really with, op with Open Sound Control. You can send integers, floats, even strings, I think. Uh, and you can go up to, I think, 32-bit resolution, which is pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, you can use it um, for a lot of things. And today we're going to use it to send some data from um, Pure Data, which is a graphical audio programming language, to Processing, which is a... I believe it's an IDE language and API for doing graphics uh, based on Java. So it's for doing things like visualizations and VJing and stuff like that. Right, so how does Open Sound Control work on a basic level? Uh, you pack things into messages, essentially. Um, and each message has a pattern matching address, which has the format slash something, followed by a number of arguments, which can be integers or floats or so on. And essentially, based on the pattern matching address of each message, you know what controller or what destination they are intended for. So, for example, if I have a dial on one side, and it's it's called it's uh, the first dial in your synthesizer, but you want to do all your synthesis on another computer, you will send a message from the first one, um, and the message will be slash dial, or slash dial 1, for example, um, followed by the argument, which is the, in the integer uh, representing the value of the dial. Then you'll send them over using EDP, and on the other computer you'll receive them, and if you basically, you compare the pattern matching address with a known pattern matching address, which is um, dial 1 or oscillator 1, and if it's equal to that, then you send the data to that oscillator. So based on this system, you can send uh, messages to different oscillators and route them around and stuff like that. So you can do a ton of stuff using this. So you can have your control on one computer, you can have your synthesis on another one, you can distribute things and all kinds of stuff like that. Alright, so I already have the patch built here on the left side. I'm going to do it again just to show off exactly how it works and to make it simpler. Um, by the way, this is a very, very simple thing. It's just an example of how to link up processing to pure data using Open Sound Control. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a phasor here, which is a sawtooth oscillator. I'll control its frequency using a number box. I'll make a multiplication object here. So I can multiply its output with the output from a sinusoidal oscillator here on the right side. And I'll control the sinusoid's frequency, uh, yeah, frequency with a number box. Now I'll multiply this again, so I can have some volume control here. I'll put a vertical fader, divide its output by 127. that, and I'll put a DAC here so you can actually hear the sound. Now hopefully I'll raise the volume of this, I'll raise the frequency of the phaser, and you can hear it being modulated by the sinusoid. And actually I'm going to add one to the sinusoid's input output so that it is all positive without getting any remodulation. Nice, so now you can hear the phaser being modulated by the, uh, by the uh, sinusoid. Turn this off for now and I'll put it on the right, so it doesn't get in the way. Now, I'm going to put a snapshot object in here, so that we can get a numerical value from the, um, os from the sinusoid oscillator, because we're going to use its value and we're going to send its value over the network. And by the way, I'm sending it back to my own computer, so it's not going to some, it's not going somewhere else. But it works the same way over a network, so don't worry about that. Right, so I'm going to have a metro object here with a toggle and a rate. So, so we're going to bang the left input of the snapshot, and this will get us a numerical value from the oscillator every three milliseconds. So you can hear it, you can, you can see it uh, oscillating here in this number box. So now we have the value of that oscillator. 
Now we're going to set up the OSC stuff. We're going to add and send OSC object. And I'll put, sorry, put a message box here saying connect localhost, which is this computer. So this would basically be your IP address. It could be 192.16 something or whatever. Uh, but we're, we're going to go with localhost for now because it's my computer I'm trying to send back to. And I'll plug this into the uh, send OSC object. If I click this now, the OSC object is sending all its, all its messages to localhost port 8000. So now we have to send this value um, to processing. So what we're going to do is I'll add an object here saying prepend. So you hopefully know that prepend uh, adds something to the beginning of a message. And I'm going to prepend send slash sin osc. So I'm sending a message which will contain the word send followed by slash sin osc followed by the value from the, from the number box which is the value of our oscillator at the specific point in time. And we'll, I'm going to plug this directly into send OSC which is now going to send this value over to processing. Now what's happening in processing? Uh, I'm not going to assume you've done processing yet, so um, I'll just go through it at a high level. Essentially there's a listener here, which um, is listening on port 8000 for incoming OSC messages. And then I have a function called uh, OSC event, which says if the pattern matching address of this object, of this message, is slash synosc, then get the value from the first argument, which is our uh, float value, and put it into the variable value, which is a float value, which is a float variable. And we're using this float variable uh, called value to control the radius of a circle here. So this, I'm multiplying it by 50. So remember, we're sending it values between 0 and 2. So our maximum radius will be 200 and the radius of the circle will oscillate between 0 and 100 now. Um, so yeah, because I'm, I'm constantly changing the value of um, this variable called value, the circle will bounce up and down essentially. Well, it, well, it won't bounce, but it'll pulsate or something. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's look at that. There it is, and if I turn the volume up, you'll be able to hear exactly what's happening. Essentially, the sinusoid modulator is changing the radius of the circle. Now what I want to do is I want to send um, the frequency of the phaser oscillator to control the color of um, the circle. So I'm going to make another prepend here. It'll be called slash, um, let's call it slash color. And I'll, I'll just put the value of the phaser in there. And this will be an RGB value, so we'll stick to values between 0 and 255. Uh, so yeah, if I s put this into the send OSC object now, it's going to send the value of this phaser here whenever I change its frequency. And I'm also listening here for messages called slash color, and I'm putting the integer value into a variable called circle color. And then when I'm doing the color for my circle, I'm using the circle color as one of the RGB values. So now when I change the frequency of uh, the oscillator, I will get um, color changes. So I'm, I'm going to start from the frequency of zero. Actually, I should probably turn the volume up. So you can see now, if I turn the frequency up, it's it bluer. If I turn it down, it goes towards green. And like before, if I turn this up, you'll you'll see uh, the circle pulsating to the oscillator, the, to the sinusoidal oscillator from before. All right, let's do something else. Now what I want to do is I want to send the volume of from the, from the fader, from the volume fader, um, to processing to control the maximum radius of the circle. So if the volume will be zero, we'll get no circle. 
the volume is high, we'll get uh, the maximum radius of 100 pixels. So let's uh, try doing this. Now I'm going to add another object here, another prepend object. It will be prepend send slash volume. And I'll get the value from 0 to 1 from here. And I'll send it over uh, the, the network using SendOSC. Now in here I have to listen for this message. So I'm going to copy this if statement. And instead of slash color, I'll call it slash volume. And I'm going to get the value from that and put it into my volume variable, which is a float, so I have to get the float value from it. So now, um, the variable called volume, which you can see here, um, will be affected by the volume from the fader, from the, for, by the value from the fader. Now, I want to make the radius of the circle go to a maximum of um, value times 50 times um, the value from the fader. So I'm going to multiply it times volume here. And now, if I start it again, essentially I'll get no circle here because the volume is zero. As I raise the volume, you'll see the circle getting bigger and bigger. Now, of course, we've still got all the frequency changes, so the color can be changed from here and we can change its pulsation rate from there. Right, so I hope you've liked this example of using uh, Open Sound Control. There are more tutorials coming up soon, so keep an eye on this channel. Perhaps subscribe. Yes, you should probably do that actually. Um, right now, just click subscribe. Things will happen, very awesome things.